Namaskar. Now today we begin with our uh, next lecture in our course on sales and distribution management and this is lecture uh, number 33 uh, which is on sales quota. We have already begun our discussion on sales quota in the previous lecture which was lecture 32. We shall continue with the same topic uh, in this lecture uh, on uh, in our course on sales and distribution management. Now, the various concepts covered uh, in sales quota are the meaning of sales quota, the rationale behind uh, sales quotas, the objective of setting sales quotas and the types of sales quotas. Now, we have discussed this in the previous lecture. Now, we shall move on uh, with our discussion on the methods for setting sales quotas, how do you administer the quota system and what are the guidelines for setting and administering a good sales quota system. So, let us begin with our discussion on sales quota. Now, uh, coming to a brief recap, uh, you know, if you remember, we said that a sales quota is a quantitative objective and it is assigned to a marketing or a sales unit and with the objective that a desired a level of sales volume can be attained uh, within a time frame and uh, the quota is assigned to a marketing unit or to a sales unit and the unit here may be a person. Uh, you know, as an individual salesperson or it could be a branch or a region or a zone. Uh, or the quota could also uh, be set for a marketing unit or a sales unit like a channel partner. And these quotas may be set uh, for sales volume or for expense or for profit as well as for selling and non-selling activities. So, uh, the quota is a quantitative objective assigned to a marketing or a sales unit and this marketing or sales unit could be a a division or a zone or a region or a branch or an individual salesperson and the quotas here uh, can be set for sales volumes or for uh, you know expenses and profits as well as for selling and non-selling activities. In the previous lecture we spoke about the various types of sales quotas where we said that we have the sales volume uh, quota which could either be spelled out uh, in currency or in terms of units or in terms of um, you know uh, points and then we spoke of uh, the uh, you know expense quotas uh, where we said that it was it, it, it relates to the gross profits and the net profits and the selling expenses and then we spoke about the activity quotas uh, and a combination of each of these which can be used uh, by organizations depending upon the kind of product uh, they, are, they, they, they are selling depending upon the kind of segment they are catering to and the kind of market conditions. Uh, so, now uh, let us continue uh, with uh, you know the next uh, topic of discussion under this uh, under sales quotas which is how do you go about setting sales quotas or what are the methods for setting sales quotas. So, uh, the different methods may be used to set sales quotas and these could be based uh, or and or derived from on the basis of the following methods. Uh, they could be based on the territorial sales potential or the total market estimates or the past sales experience, executive judgment, uh, salesperson's estimates or the compensation plan. Now, most companies use more than one of these so that realistic quotas can be set and so uh, they, there are different methods for setting sales quotas. We have the territorial sales potential method, the total market estimates method, the past sales experience method, the executive judgment method, the salesperson's estimates method and the compensation plan method. And I repeat um, in most cases companies use more than one of these so that realistic quotas can be set for the different marketing and sales units be it the salesperson or the branch or the region or the zone or the national territory. So, let us first begin with the first method which is the territorial sales potential method for uh, deciding or determining quotas. Now, the sales volume quota here is determined on the basis of the sales potential in a particular sales territory and the sales potential here uh, represents the maximum sales that a sales organization can achieve 
in a particular period. Now, deriving the sales uh, targets or the sales quota from the territorial sales potential uh, is, uh, is appropriate in those conditions where the territorial sales potential is in coherence or in conjunction with the territorial design and a bottom up approach has been used for determining the sales estimates. We have spoken about the top down and the bottom up approach uh, on sales forecasting and on uh, sales planning uh, in the previous lectures. So, in those cases where the territorial sales potential is in coherence with the territorial design and where a bottom up approach is used for determining sales estimates, uh, the, the sales managers can use territorial sales potentials as uh, an appropriate method for determining the sales targets or the sales quotas. Now, the generally companies follow the following procedure. They estimate the industry sales forecast or the market potential for the next year using the sales forecasting methods. Then the multiple factor index or the MFI for each territory is calculated. The MFI is based on the factors uh, that influence the sales of a product and uh, are assigned weights matching the degree of sales opportunities. So, the multiple factor index or the MFI for each territory is calculated and this, this MFI is based on such factors which influence the sales of a product and these are assigned weights matching the degree of sales opportunities. Next, this industry sales forecast in a territory for the next year is calculated. Uh, this is the territory market, territorial uh, market potential and is equal to the industry sales forecast for the next year multiplied by the MFI for each territory. Finally, the territorial sales quota is determined which is equal to the territor territory market potential multiplied by the estimated market share of a company in a particular territory. So, companies first estimate the industry sales forecast or the market potential for the next year. They can use different kinds of sale forecasting methods for this. Then the multiple factor index or the MFI for each territory is calculated. The MFI is based on the factors that influence the sales of a particular product and these are assigned weights matching the degree of sales opportunities. After this, the industry sales forecast in a territory for the next year is determined and this is the territory market potential and it is equal to uh, the industry sales forecast for the next year multiplied by the MFI for each territory. And finally, the territory sales potential, say territory sales quota is determined which is equal to the territory market potential multiplied by the expected market share of an company and its products in a particular territory. Now, the second method which may be used to set quotas is the total market estimates. Now, this method is used by companies which do not have sales force estimates for their defined uh, territories and in this case the top down approach is used. We have spoken about the top down approach in uh, previous lectures. Uh, the company can either divide the total sales estimates into relative sales opportunities by using a suitable index or it can convert the company's sales ex ex estimates into a national sales target by using an index of relative sales opportunities which can further uh, be then classified across or categorized across zones, regions, branches and to individual sales people. So, uh, the total market estimates is used in situations uh, where uh, you know the sales force estimates uh, for the defined territories are not available and the top down approach is used. So, the companies either divide the total sales estimates into relative op sales opportunities by using a suitable index or they can convert the company sales estimates into a national sales target by using an index of relative sales opportunities across territories and zones which they can further then divide across zones, regions and branches and to individual sales persons. So, how do companies go about doing this? They first estimate the industry sales forecast or the market potential for the next year using the sales forecasting method. Then the comp this estimated then, then, they, then the company's estimated market share for the next year is calculated. After this, the company's sales forecast for the next year is determined. This equals industry sales forecast or the market potential multiplied by the company's estimated market share for next year. Following this, the percentage share out of the total uh, company sales in the previous year for each territory is calculated. So, this helps arrive uh, at the territory sales quota where this equals the company's next year sales forecast multiplied by the percentage share out of the total company sales in the previous year for each territory. So, uh, the, the companies they start with estimating the industry sales forecast for the next year 
and then the company's estimated market share for the next year is calculated. After this, the company's sales forecast for the next year is determined, which this equals uh, industry sales or market potential multiplied by the company's estimated market share for the next year. After this, the percentage share out of the total company sales in the previous year for each territory is calculated and this will help us reach a figure which is the territory sales quotas and this equals the company's next year sales forecast uh, multiplied by the percentage share out of the total company sales in the previous year for each territory. So, in this way companies uh, set uh, the sales quotas based on the, uh, the, based on the uh, total market estimates. The third method which companies can use to, uh, to, to, to decide on the sales quotas is the past sales experience. Uh, in this method, the quota is set on the assumption that there is a relationship between the past sales of the company and the future sales of the company. So, uh, what companies do is that they take uh, the data for the past year uh, or past years. So, the past year sales either one or an average of uh, previous three to five year sales is taken and a subjective uh, percentage is added. This subjective percentage is a very arbitrary figure. Uh, and it, it, it may be a random figure or a percentage by which the uh, market uh, is expected to grow in future and in this way each territory's sales quota is set. However, there is a problem with this method. Uh, the very premise of the method that future sales are based on past sales may not be a correct assumption and hence it is, it is important that this method is not used uh, you know solely it is all it must be used with other methods. So, uh, because you know in case the company has had not so good sales in the past because of uh, poor sales coverage or because of poor performance of the sales people then uh, the method would lead to uh, faulty estimates for the future and will continue to give uh, faulty figures uh, you know in future for perpetuity. So, uh, this is the reason why uh, this method is some is, is not appropriate to be used uh, alone or in soul. Also, in case the past performance goes unobserved, such errors would be perpetually repeated. So, that is the reason why this method uh, is not uh, you know recommended to be used uh, with full uh, you know validity and it must always be used in uh, with other methods. Um, it, Often it happens that the company is not able to perform well or it does not generate sufficient sales because of poor performance of the uh, sales force because they do not lack the knowledge, skills and abilities or because they are not motivated enough to perform. So, in such cases uh, depending upon past sales figures may not be uh, to, 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 to predict the future may not be wise. Similarly, it may so happen that uh, the company has not performed well in the past because of certain market conditions uh, which were adverse to the company and now if, if you know in, in cases where the market condition has improved or things are better for the organization depending upon past figures may not again be right. So, that is how this method suffers from limitations. Uh, past sales figures and past sale trends may be just one of the factors for deciding the sales quota and so uh, this method must be used with other methods. The executive judgment method uh, is, a, is a method which bases the sales quota on executive judgment. The decision to base sales targets on the base of executive judgment is right and warranted only and only when the company is new or it is launching new products or it is entering into new territories and markets and when not much information uh, is available. Uh, for example, there is not much information available about the market potential or the territorial sales potential. Now, it is very crucial that executives who make judge estimates uh, you know and provide judgments are involved uh, you know uh, in, in the process and they have enough experience to make these sound judgments. Very, very important uh, that uh, people who are making these estimates have the necessary knowledge, skills and abilities, they have the experience, they have served in uh, similar territories, they have sold similar products and they have enough experience to make sound judgments. The method again should not be used in Seoul and should be used with other methods. Then we have the salesperson's uh, estimates method. Now, sometimes companies may give the entire responsibility of determining the sales targets to the salespeople themselves. Now, the reason behind this is that because the salespeople are, uh, you know, close 
uh, close to the territories, they are working in the territories, they know the realities, they know the true picture, uh, they are aware of the market conditions in those territories and uh, so they would be, uh, you know, they, they are expected to set realistic targets. Also the management feels that by asking the sales people to set their own targets, uh, they, they, you know, there would be lesser complaints from the sales staff uh, with respect to, uh, you know, difficult targets having been set or unrealistic targets being having been set uh, because uh, you know it is the sales staff themselves who have been responsible uh, in the target setting or in the goal setting also because these people have been involved in the target setting or the goal setting they would themselves be more motivated towards attaining these goals or these sales targets however the limitation with this method is that there's always a possibility that sales people may set quotas which are either too high or too low and they may deliberately uh, you know set uh, s small targets which can be uh, achieved easily and so that they can pronounce themselves as big achievers or they may set targets which are too 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 uh, you know high uh, uh, so they are too high and and uh, uh, unrealistic or it may so happen uh, just bec just because they want to earn more commissions or it may so happen that they set uh, targets which are unrealistic and very very um, you know uh, hard to achieve so that uh, they, they it, you know it, they can project to uh, the management team that they have been putting in efforts everybody all of them have been putting in efforts but they are not able to achieve them they may also set targets which are very low and small so that they can you know easily attain them and then uh, sit down and relax so uh, it, it this this is the limitation with this particular method and so to deal with this problem most sales managers discuss with their sales people, they take their inputs, they, they uh, take their suggestions, but the final decision with respect to uh, the sales quota or the target is actually set, is actually decided by the sales managers themselves. The next method is the salesperson's compensation plan method. Now, companies may also decide to base the sales targets on the basis of the compensation that the management feels that the salespersons must be offered. Uh, companies keep in mind issues of internal and external equity when they design their compensation packages and their incentive and reward schemes. Internal equity is when people performing similar jobs in the organization are rewarded equitably. External equity is when people working on similar jobs in all companies in a particular industry are paid similarly. Now, most companies act, practice this principle of internal and external equity and they keep in mind the kind of incentives that they must give to their salespersons to keep them motivated at, at their workplace. However, too much of reward or too much of incentives would mean that the company would lose out on finances or on uh, you know money which it could use later for other for other activities so companies decide on the kind of compensation or the uh, or the limits to the kind of compensation that they they, they can afford to give to their salespersons and accordingly keeping in mind principles of internal external equity they 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 set such targets which they feel uh, if uh, if if attained by the sales force can be rewarded as well as uh, you know uh, there can be a feeling of equitable re equitable reward as well as they would be uh, you know a company would be in a position to save on money for 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 other expenses to be taken care of so in this case no past estimates or territorial estimates are used neither no judgments are made compensation is purely and purely used as a measure for determining targets now coming to administering the quota system sales quotas that are set must be reasonable they must be realistic the target should be such that they are well accepted by the sales people and the sales personnel must be kept well informed of the targets to be achieved uh, as well as uh, you know they must be uh, given feedback on their performance uh, periodically so this would make the sales person sales manager's job easy as he would be able to secure full cooperation from the sales personnel so it's very very important that sales quotas are set they are difficult goals but reasonable and realistic and the, the, they are well accepted by the sales force and the sales force are not only made aware of the targets that they must attain but they are also <coughs> given feedback on their performance periodically. 
So, sales quotas that are set must be reasonable and realistic. To be effective, targets formulated by an organization must be accurate, they may be fair and attainable. The more closely the targets are related to the sales potential, the higher would be the accuracy and the targets must be objectively set keeping in mind the conditions in the market as well as the characteristics of uh, you know a respective sales territory, the job requirements on the, uh, on, on the uh, sales job position as well as the knowledge, skills, abilities of the sales force and the motivation of the sales force in a particular sales territory. Past performance of sales executives in a particular sales territory may be taken into consideration while formulating the sales targets or the sales quota for the sales staff and while setting sales targets, managers must consult, consult the sales force and take their opinion. Uh, the consent and acceptance of the sales personnel in target setting procedures must be kept in mind because this would help uh, e you know attain goals uh, in a much uh, easier way in a much uh, you know better manner. The targets should be such that they are well accepted by the sales force, sales personnel must be involved in the target setting. When they are involved in the process of uh, determining sales targets, it becomes easy for the company to explain to them the reason behind the formulation of such targets, whether they are high or whether they are low and the conflicts over reducing targets are also lessened in case the targets are set very high. Uh, you know, often it happens that because targets are set very high, there is a resistance from the sales team and from the sales personnel. So, such conflicts can be reduced if the sales people are included in the process of goal setting. Uh, also, when sales persons are involved in target setting, management can be assured that the targets would be accepted and attained because the sales staff themselves have been a part of the goal setting. However, it is advisable for companies not to entrust the whole target setting process to the sales team. Their participation should be, uh, you know, uh, solicited uh, to smoothen the process of acceptance of the goal and to minimize chances of any kind of conflict that may happen later on. Sales people must be well informed of the targets to be achieved as well as their performance periodically. Uh, they must be kept informed about the activities that they must, they must perform and their periodic performance. This would help the sales staff realize as to whether they are uh, you know performing well and or where they are lacking and uh, they would and, and and then the sales managers would be able to uh, take uh, you know appropriate measures uh, for improving uh, the performance of their staff with respect to achievement of the targets there must be a provision for continuous and close managerial supervision and control as well as mentoring and guidance uh, for achievement of targets it's important that the performance of sales persons is regularly monitored by their supervisors or by their superiors and this can be facilitated by charting their performance on a periodic basis whether it is weekly or fortnightly or monthly and often it happens that because of adverse market conditions uh, sales people are not able to attain targets or because targets are too high uh, sales persons are not able to attain the targets. So, in such ca cases sales people often need advice and encouragement from their superiors and so it's very important that sales people are provided with such uh, you know with advice and encouragement from their superiors for achieving their targets on time and they must be provided with all kind of help and support uh, which they need so that they can perform well in their respective territories. Now coming to the guidelines for setting and administering a good sales quota system. Now uh, setting a sales quota is a difficult exercise, it must be done very very carefully and executives who are given this responsibility of setting targets uh, must possess uh, the knowledge, skills, abilities, uh, they must have the desired, they must have uh, you know, experience in this activity and they must handle the task with great clarity and precision. The quota system must be such which is simple to understand, uh, easy to implement, easy to monitor and uh, objectivity must be exercised while fixing quotas, the targets must be fact based on facts, on figures and keeping in mind the uh, characteristics uh, of a physical, of a characteristics of a sales territory and keeping in mind the market conditions uh, prevailing in a sales territories. They must be realistic, the targets must be smart. When we speak of smart, it is uh, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time specific. Now, it is very important uh, that uh, targets are, are defined in terms of time. 
because until unless there is a time uh, you know a limit uh, and, uh, you know a plan in the form of a quota will never be attained. So, when we talk of planning when we talk of control uh, both of which uh, you know uh, can be seen uh, through a quota system uh, what is required majorly is the time dimension. So, quotas must be very time specific we should which would speak about what has to be attained in what time period and uh, these goals must be specific they must be measurable they should be quantifiable uh, they must be realistic and attainable and uh, very very time specific. If targets are too high the salesperson will apprehend the futility of the effort and would not put in efforts at all uh, they would be demotivated and leave the organization which would lead to high attrition rate. Again this gets related to rooms expectancy theory of motivation where if uh, you know the targets are too high salespersons would feel that their efforts would not in any way lead to the desired performance. So, targets should not be too high uh, because if they are too high sales people will, will apprehend the futility of their efforts and they will not put in any efforts at all and they would sooner or later leave the organization and go uh, which would be damaging to the organization uh, you know in every you know uh, especially and in even more damaging in case the person leaves and joins the competitors organization. If targets are low company may forego the opportunity to earn higher sales and profits as the salesperson may be just contented to reach the target and sell no more. So, whatever the targets are they should be very realistic they should not be low if they are low people would just attain them and then sit quietly and relax they would not be uh, you know too motivated or too excited to uh, work harder uh, to sell more. On the other hand uh, if they are high people would not be motiv motivated enough to perform as they would feel that their efforts would not lead to the performance and it is going to be a futile effort. So, better they do not put in any effort at all. Also there must be a provision for some flexibility so that adjustments can be made in case of sudden changes with respect to demand or with respect to uh, competitor strategies uh, etcetera. Sales managers must also ensure that the sales people understand the quota while setting quotas they must involve their sales persons such a participation would serve as a motivational tool as the sales person would always want to attain such targets which they themselves have set. As I said a little while ago this would reduce chances of conflict and resistance for on from the sales persons uh, to, to the management because uh, the sales persons themselves would realize that they are have been a part of this goal setting and so they have no right to actually voice uh, uh, against uh, the quota set by the management. Uh, sales managers must also provide periodic feedback on the sales persons performance and they must ensure that they provide uh, the right kind of help and support and mentor them to improve their performance. So, with this we come to an end of our discussion on the sales quotas. The references are still Kandif uh, Puri, uh, Govani and Puri sales and distribution management Pearson India 2017, Panda and Sahidev 2011 and 2012, um, Oxford University Press and Havaldar and Kawale 2017 third edition sales and distribution management Megra Hill. With this we come to uh, the end of the third lecture on the seventh module of the course and we also conclude our discussion on the sales quotas. I hope you found this, this, this lecture helpful, thank you.